welcome back into another 10 minute Tuesday. In this series of vlogs, we've tried to answer your most asked questions and previous topics have included um, costs of European travel, which crossing to choose, the impending Etias visa waiver scheme and why we don't full time van life. Well, in this vlog, I'm going to deal with all the questions you've asked us about traveling with Poppy, including documentation, insurance, public transport, one or two critters that you need to be aware of when you travel in Europe. But some of you might be asking, who's Poppy? Where have you been? Poppy is our two-year-old energetic, feisty cockapoo. But more of that later. Let's start the clock. Let's start with documentation. To take your pet abroad now, you will need either a valid animal health certificate or a valid European pet passport. I'm not gonna go into all the minutiae about this because we have done a previous vlog on this and the links will be in the description below. But the headlines are, your dog will need to be microchipped and have had a rabies jab at least 21 days before travel. A vet can then issue you with an animal health certificate. It needs to be in the language of the first country that you arrive in. So if you do Dover, Cali, Fran French, if you do Hook of Holland um, from Harwich, then obviously Dutch, etc, etc. Once you have been issued the animal health certificate, it's valid for 10 days. You must use it within 10 days and it's valid for four months. And it's, you can only use it for one trip as well. If you are lucky enough to have a European pet passport, then please, please remember the golden rule. Don't let your UK vet um, put the rabies booster in it, otherwise it becomes invalid. Now we've found two really useful um, Facebook groups. The first one I'll mention to you is a Facebook group called Animal Health Certificate. It's monitored by a vet and gives you really good information and will answer all your questions. We've previously used Abbeywell Vets in Folkestone for Poppy's Animal Health Certificate. Um, you can use your own vet. Costs obviously vary around the country and there are some other specialist vets that, um, that are, are on there as well. But again, check out the Facebook page. On return to the UK, whether you've got a pet passport or an animal health certificate, your dog will need to have a tapeworm treatment. Now that has to be between 24 to 124 hours, 120 hours before you return to the UK. And again, there's another really useful Facebook group called, unsurprisingly, Recommended Vets for Tapeworm Treatment. And on there is a map that other travelers have used it will show you the vets that they've used if you're lucky it will give you the costs when the treatment was whether they speak english and if there's somewhere to park close by as well so let's talk about insurance the first thing to check is that your holiday insurance will cover repatriation of your dog so if you need to be repatriated for whatever reason then make sure that it covers your dog as well the second one is please check the small print on your pet insurance I chose originally a pet insurance that said it was valid for European travel for 90 days. But in the small print, it said that was 90 days per calendar year, which for us wasn't good enough. So I had to change pet insurance. So please make sure in the small print of your pet insurance exactly what the insurance covers, that it covers you for the countries that you're visiting and also it covers you for the amount of days in the year that you're going to be away. Let's next have a look at public transport in Europe. If you watched our last series of vlogs where we travelled throughout Northern Europe, you'll have seen that Poppy went on buses, trams, trains, underground trains, overground trains, you name it. The consensus of ad advice that we found was that Poppy needed to be on a short lead and she needed to wear a muzzle. Now I got a soft muzzle for her from Pets at Home and trained her with that before we travelled, but it was there was enough movement in it for her for me to give her a treat if she needed it. Now travel in Europe can depend not only between country and country, but region, and sometimes it can be at the discretion of the bus driver. So please check out the local information of the city or the town that you're visiting before you travel. Now, if your dog 
can go in a, is small enough to go in a pet carrier or can go on your lap, then they may travel for free. If not, then again, you might need a concession ticket for your dog, which is basically a child price. But again, please check out the local regulations for whichever European city or country that you're traveling to. When you're traveling in Europe, obviously not only do you need to eat, but your dog does as well. Now, dog food is widely available in all European supermarkets and in pet stores as well. It's the same regulations um, as travel for us. You can't take in any meat or any meat derivatives. So you really need to buy it while you're abroad. Now, thankfully for us, Poppy isn't on any sort of restricted or specialized diet. So we buy her a high quality dog food when we're in Europe. If your dog does have some dietary requirements, then if you have authorization from your vet, you can take up to two kilograms per person of that specialized food into Europe with you. When you're traveling in Europe, then obviously the temperatures can vary, not only inside the van, but outside the van. So inside the van for Poppy, we've got a total cool machine. It's not an aircon unit, but it does blow out cooler air. We've also got two USB chargeable fans that we can move around um, and we can put them in front of Poppy if she gets warm. We've also got for her a cool vest for when we're out and about. It, uh, it was another product from Pets at Home and all you have to do to activate it is put it under cool water, keep it cold and put it onto the dog. I find this really useful because if we're moving around, I can then cool it down again, either um, from a tap somewhere or in a stream or a river. When you're traveling in Europe, safety of your dog, uh, we found is paramount. And there are a couple of nasty critters that you need to be aware of. Now, forgive me if my pronunciation is wrong, but there is something called leishmaniasis. Now, this is a disease that's spread by a parasitic sand fly. And please don't just think beach. This can be all over in mountains. It is um, spread throughout the whole of Europe and the sand flies are prevalent between at dusk and at dawn and they can bite your dog and give them an allergic reaction and spread a disease. The advice is don't take your dog out at dusk, don't take them out at dawn and make sure that they sleep inside. Now our vet recommended um, a collar for us, um, a scalibar collar that you put on a few days before travel and this is a preventative measure for your dog to keep the sand fly tick away from them. Again, it's net, nothing's 100%, so please check out the advice of the country that you're traveling to. The other thing to be aware of when traveling in Europe is the processional caterpillar. Again, these were active, people thought, predominantly in Southern and Eastern Europe, but they have been found now as far as Switzerland and in and around France. They nest in pine and oak trees, and if you see the nest in the trees, it's like a, sil a silvery web, um, like a large cotton wool ball. Again, these are active between April to July, and when they come to the ground, hence the name, they march in procession. On their backs, they have really long um, hairs. Now, if we were to touch the hairs, we may get an allergic reaction. If your dog touches them, which is generally going to be by the, around the mouth, the nose, the tongue, then it can cause a significant fatal reaction because it causes swelling around the nose and the mouth. So these are things you need to be aware of when you travel and certainly you need to avoid them. I hope you found all that information really useful. I hope I've stuck to the time limits. Again, we don't profess to be experts. This is just what we've found while we've been traveling. But that's it for now. Helen out.